Hi folks. After having done so many tests with so many fans, I had an interesting thought. Can the A12 X25 catch up to the leading fans if I run it a bit faster? Now, the reason for drawing attention to this particular fan is simply because it has been regarded as the best 120mm fan pretty much since it was released in 2018. And it seems now that the tide is changing, slowly but surely. It's no secret that I've criticised both this fan and Noctua themselves quite sternly, but not without good reason. Noctua did a very good job of buttering up the target market by shrewdly comparing it to slower fans from their lineup, and they hailed its superiority from the get go. Now, I want to make crystal clear that I have no brand allegiance or agenda in any way, and I actually like this fan a lot. I was one of many excited enthusiasts who patiently waited for its release, especially after we first caught sight of it at Computex 2017, where it was simply called the Next Generation A-Series Fan. And of course, its similarity to the Gentle Typhoon couldn't be denied, so there was much talk about the town regarding its expected performance. Now, I bought this fan myself, and there are many things I love about it. It's undeniably a premium product, with a number of great features, not least the box, which I still have. And probably my favourite feature of any 120mm fan is the silicon gasket. It's not really a performance-enhancing feature, but it's a really nice premium touch, so well done Noctua. Unfortunately for the A12X25, its performance in my tests has been underwhelming, to say the least. It delivered, at best, an average performance in the thermal tests, and its joint bottom in the pressure tests, along with its clone, the Tough Fan 12, which is definitely not a good look. Now again, the question, does the A12X25 possess the headroom to redeem itself? Can it beat the other fans if I run it faster? Let's find out. In terms of pressure performance at full speed, it is somewhat below spec, reaching 21 pascals, which is actually more than 10% below the value specified by Noctua. But the fan holds its speed quite well in spite of this, so it does deal with back pressure reasonably well. After some preliminary thermal test runs, I had a good idea of the fan's performance curve and was eventually able to get it past the Fantex T30's 1600 RPM performance. But how fast did I have to run it? Well, here's the evidence. It's running flat out at 2040 RPM and at this speed it's able to eclipse the T30 by a whopping two tenths of a degree. Now, whilst it's arguably a victory of sorts, it's still behind the thermal right fan by quite some margin. And there's another question. Is the A12X25 a good fan? Well, the objective answer has to come from physics, which means assessing the fan's aerodynamic performance. The fan has poor pressure capacity and is clearly behind in airflow as well needing a significant boost of several hundred RPM to reach and surpass the performance of the other fans. However, there is one aspect of aerodynamic performance that this fan does probably better than any other fan, and that is sound attenuation. And this is likely why it has been a firm favourite in the community for so long. It's simply able to operate at higher speeds without making more noise. Moving away from the physics, the only caveat here is the price, and this is a big sticking point for me, probably even a deal breaker. At the time of making this video, the signature poop and puke version of the fan is £29, whilst the more appealing Chromax Black version is a whopping £31, which to me is a ridiculous asking price for a single fan that has no extra features. I'll be honest, I balked at spending £25 on both the T30 and the Lian Li P28, but they perform considerably better than the Noctua in all of the tests. To summarise, I wouldn't call the A12X25 a bad fan, but based on the poor aerodynamic performance and the nonsensical price, you can definitely do better. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.